Hello, everyone, and welcome to the best and worst of Walt Disney World. I am your host, Rhino Clavin, and in this week's episode, we are talking about the worst bars at the Walt Disney World theme parks. And to join me for this discussion, we've got Mr. Sean Falk. Hi. Charles Boda. Hello. Steve Porter. Hello. And Craig Williams. No way, hoy. Yes. So uh, in our last episode, we did the best of, and we are just staring at Craig, and um, we did the best of bars at the Walt Disney World theme parks, and we may or may not have left some people's favorites off because they're in the worst list. Um, So we are just going to dive right in here. These are in no particular order. Um, So why don't I start with the Spice Road Table Bar in Morocco, which I did not want to be on this list. But Craig was adamant about putting it on here. Well, I, I think we should even step back another step there and say... While none of these, I believe, are truly bad places that you should absolutely avoid, these are the least favorite ones that we would go to. The first the first list we did, those are all the ones we say, go, get to them. This is like, well, you're not going to be let down if you do go there, but... They have their Maybe merits. They yeah. have their merits, but they're yeah. but they're like overall, they're not the repeatable experience yeah. that we so, believe they should be. They yeah. provide alcohol. With the Spice Road Table Bar, obviously the big issue with it is that you walk in and it's this great, amazing bar, uh, just completely beautifully designed, except for the fact that there are absolutely no tables or chairs anywhere around because that you just literally walk up here and you get your drinks. My next issue with it is uh, nothing against like the Moroccan beer or uh, the mixed drinks, but the mixed drinks for me are disgustingly sweet, and I've tried pretty much all of them at one point in time. They are all disgustingly sweet, and the beers aren't worth the price that you pay for them. So essentially, this beautifully themed bar, I walk in and I order like vodka sodas because that's all I enjoy there. So while it is a great place to stop and get a drink because there's not a lot of lines, it's just you have to move on right away mm-hmm. from it. You can't sit here. My problem is it just seems so out of place. It feels like it's the... It's the like, best kept secret. It No, it feels like it's where the wait staff or something should be like greeting you before you go into Spice Road Table. It's in the lobby before you go in. Like it, it feels like... It does have that, yeah. Like is it an afterthought? Or? Yeah, like it feels like they built the desk there and then they're like... Or the counter there and then they're like, this could be a bar. It's, it's, it is unfortunate because it, I, I didn't really think about it not having any seating because for me it was kind of like, oh, well, I just get it on the trip around, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and that's why I always liked it because there aren't a lot of full bars in in um, in Epcot if you're somebody who doesn't drink beer or something like that, you know. Um, <clears throat> like I have a friend who very specifically only drinks one type of drink. So he can only get this drink here and in Rosencrown. Um, cause those are the only two full bars in and Epcot. And Gusto. Tuta Gusto, which we learned today actually, because I wasn't sure. Or yeah, we learned today because we also recorded the best of episodes and that was on our list there, which is a good, a good thing to note. But John, didn't you have something to say about this? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I will say just in general, I mean, I didn't have a lot to say on the best episode more so cause we were talking about like, what's our criteria for this. Mine was, uh, you know, a bar that you would also like sit and have your drink there like and you don't the experience. Yeah. The yeah. experience of it, you don't need to, it's not like you need to leave with your drink or anything. Um, I'm actually just not that kind of person. I do acknowledge that's what makes the bar or the lounge a really good thing, but I'm an active drinker and mm-hmm. not, I, mm-hmm. I don't sit and casually drink. Um, so for me, a lot of things that are on the worst are some of my favorite things because I can get them really fast. With that being said, Spice Road Table is not one that I care that much about, but it's because I don't like Moroccan drinks, and I feel like having the open bar, I mean, the the full bar, which is awesome that, that exists, um, I, ca- I like Craig, I end up getting things like, you know, rum and Coke or something, rather That's than true. something authentic yeah. to that country, mm-hmm. whereas when I drink around the world, it's because I want something authentic from that country. Well, I will tell you, if you're looking for somewhere that has a heavy pour, this is where to go. Because That's they true. will, they, even if it's not a double, I feel like they do, like, I have been, like, where you go sometimes and you're like, well, it's worth it more to just get the double now yeah. so instead of two drinks. And then I'm like, well, this glass is literally full of alcohol. And that's <laughs> not exactly what I wanted either, but it's fine. So that's why I want it on the best. It is on the worst here, though. I was outvoted, and that's okay. Uh-huh. So we <laughs> are going to um, actually talk about um, another, no, you know what? 
I'll save it. I'll save it for a minute. We're going to move on to um, one in the animal kingdom, which is the Dawa Bar. Um, so this bar is located just outside of where the Festival of the Lion King was relocated to after Pandora was built. Um, as you're going up to, um, if you were going it's to... It's connected it, to Tusker, Tusker House. House. Mm-hmm. Yes, which is what I was saying. You were taking way too long to get there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you hosting the show? Uh, no, I am. Okay. So it is located at the entrance of Tusker House right after you check in. I'll give it back to you now if you want. I would love okay. that. So <laughs> it's as you're going down toward the um, the safari. So anyway, I I um I don't know. I've been here once with Steve. We got some drinks. This is when we went to Tusker House to review it, and we talked about it in our review episode um, a little bit. But it just doesn't. It's kind of it's kind of pricey, and you're not really getting you're not getting that that experience out of I it also remember it being in pretty small cu- like our cocktails were pretty small cups mm-hmm. they are um, so uh, before I would stop here every now and then uh, when I needed something at Animal Kingdom and I think the time that it solidified how bad this place was um, was when Rhino and myself and Kylie were just there this past week mm-hmm. and we got stuck under Dawa Bar during a downpour and <laughs> It's just, it's an awful area to be in. Uh, there's a lot of standing tables, which is great if you just need a place to hang out for a little bit. But between the people coming in and leaving Tusker House and just all the commotion of that area when Festival of the Lion King lets out shows are coming yeah. uh, out of there, when people are leaving Pandora the way they're supposed to, it just it adds for an over overly populated area. And then... Nothing against the music. I, I love certain aspects of Animal Kingdom, but sometimes in Africa, the music just gets way too loud when they have the live performers mm-hmm. out there, and it's just a lot happening in I, that small yeah, place. I do agree that it kind of just feels like the bar, the bar can sometimes feel it's like it's in the middle of the pathway. Yeah, mm-hmm. It needs some sort of a gate that you should open or something to get into the bar area. Because yeah, you because have of the foot traffic tra- just yeah, free you have people like going it. through tables and stuff. Well, like and that. the hard part about that too is how the line and it didn't used to be like this. I think they might have done this. I, I I don't remember it at least. Is like the line is kind of roped off now, so you really have to go get into an actual line yeah. to walk mm-hmm. up to the bar to order your drink. It's not just a bar where you can approach anymore. Yeah. So they must have had issues with this and stuff. So it is unfortunate, and I I just feel like again it is you know Craig talked about in the not like in the Morocco drinks a lot of the the themed drinks at this bar which is the complete opposite of the nomad lounge for me is they're just sugar like it's pure sugar and it'll be like here's your 12 dollar themed african beverage that i'm like mm, i don't feel like this is a themed african yeah. beverage so yeah. and there was one thing i hated about it too it's not that important but because they embrace the oh we're in africa theme of it they have Bud Light listed as an import beer. And I feel like that's just, it's wrong. Because <laughs> even though, yes, we are in Africa, it's you're going to screw up someone who doesn't know any better. And they're going to order a Bud Light thinking it is this great import beer. And that's, you know what, you have to you have to figure out a place where you, you stop the theming at. And in my opinion, that's that's one so of that's them. Where, right. That's where they've drawn yeah. the line. Yeah. The um, uh, I mentioned this during during the best thing is I no longer drink. So for me, the best and worst bars are all about what do I enjoy hanging out there? What yeah. do I want to go with my friends who are drinking? And can I can I like relax and have conversations and be comfortable and not here? No. That it's absolutely not. In fact, every time I've been with friends who stop here for a drink, I take a walk and go do something else. And then I come back and meet them because, you know, like the, just the cramped, crowded thing. Well, and honestly, most of the most of the people I'm going with who do want to grab a drink don't choose to do that there anyway. And yeah. because of uh, Craig mentioned the noise and everything, you know, it's not a place it's, you know, we talk about the lounges and stuff like that. This is the opposite of a lounge. You oh, know, God, it's, no, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not like a comfortable place to sit and relax and have conversations with anybody. Well, it is, in my mind, it's a place where you grab a drink and you drink it under an awning and then you go about what you want to do. It's weird, too, because it is covered. Like Craig was saying, we got stuck in the rain there, but only half of it was like, it, it, it all has a roof, but it's not all completely closed. It's like open slats or something like that. Yeah. So so even when it does start raining, you there's still sections of it that are downpouring. But then on top of that, you know, they always say Animal Kingdom's the the hot hottest of all the parks i don't know that i believe that but it like when it's really humid there and you're under that type of a of a of a, like an awning like you mm-hmm. said it just 
the humidity is coming in along with the body smells yeah. and everything like that. So so I'd say, you know, move on, move on, go somewhere else. So and, and with that, we are also going to move on to back to Epcot. And uh, this is probably some on some people's favorites list. But I, I, I say La Cava Tequila is one of the one of the worst now. I, I mean, when it opened, I loved it. But I, I, I just don't think it's worth the thing. Steve. I think the concept of it and if you're willing to wait to get in there then it's not horrible i think i mean it, with that said it's still overpriced um and it i think they either need to make it bigger or something because it's so the hype of, around it is so uh, massive now that trying to get a, a seat in there is almost impossible the bar itself like i just said the drinks are all like fifteen dollars or whatever so by yeah. the time you tip it's like gee, whoa the, this is yeah. almost like twenty dollars i mean not that like as the seventeen dollars yeah but. as the price increased as it when it opened because they were not this expensive when it first opened as those went up it also feels like that quality kind of fell mm. so you're not getting that experience and like, like steve talking about too you go down into into because this is located inside of the pyramid in the in the pavilion it's really kind of cramped in there and they have this like really tight winding line to get in and then once you're in there you like you go up to the bar and you order but there's already like people behind you and around you and it's like they're kind of wrangling all this and you sometimes you just want to try and get the table but there's that's never going to happen it's just it's not a comfortable environment i I feel like there's a lot of ignorance that goes on with uh cava de tequila that People act like the only place where you can get a good margarita is at this location. Yeah. And that is not true at all. You can any like if you're going to a chain Mexican restaurant. No, probably not. You you would get a better margarita here. But there are plenty of small local places in every place I've ever traveled at a small Mexican restaurant that can make a good margarita. I mean, and. The margaritas yeah. at Frontera Casino are way better than Oh, this. well, I would even go as far to say, like, don't even go inside the pyramid. Go to Chorzo de Margarita, the new margarita stand that's outside of the hut. Because not only I, – I like the margaritas that, that are made out there. Or you can just go with the classic. They got the Fiesta. They added the green margarita back in. And um, they have, like, actually, like you, if you're hungry, you can get, like, the guacamole or – um, the tamales or um, I forget what the third thing is they had, but um, you can get some of those things, you know, and um, I just it's like less of a hassle. I don't know. I think the margaritas outside. I, I've only been once since it's reopened. But with the old margarita stand the I would say that was a great place for a person that if they've never had a margarita before and you wanted to introduce you introduce them to it that was a great place for it but once you start drinking liquor and you start getting accustomed to the taste never get anything that is frozen that's that's automatically a sign for you're drinking a subpar drink yeah that's just my opinion i mean true but i my thing the like if you're like okay you're going to epcot what's the one drink that you can have while you're at epcot i always would go to that frozen margarita stand because i always felt like it was i mean yeah again the prices climb over time but it i also felt like when i'm done drinking it i feel pretty good like i don't I, w- I will say with that outdoor location you don't have to like it's if it's a pre-made thing you don't have to tip that's the only positive in cheap well i'm well i'm just I mean, kidding but i do agree they they over it's like they charge you the price with a tip included and then you have to tip when you go inside and you're like this is an 18 dollar margarita yeah. i i will say for me i would have put this on my best list because i go here pretty much every time i go to epcot are you I, getting margaritas or are you doing tequila shots what are you doing no i I'll, i get the avocado margarita it's it's like an avocado margarita yeah, yeah. and uh, i think that's what it's called but um i uh it's my the thing i look forward to when i go um i always budget that in if my friends come and want to drink around the world that i know mexico is going to be my most expensive one mm. um it is oh it is overpriced for what it is i just think especially that specific drink is so unique unique and the ones that are in there they're more unique margaritas if you don't i don't like the the syrupiness and the triple sec of the other type mm-hmm. of margaritas so um i do think that it's not at all worth your money to get we we got the guacamole and stuff once and it was like 16 dollars, i think and we didn't get refills on it or any like chip refills or anything or maybe we did but i don't it, but it was this way too inside, much money right? inside yeah, yeah. sitting inside like it was way too much but i really it, it's nice because i can get my drink 
drink and I still can leave, but I stroll around the Mexico pavilion. So I'm inside out of the heat and I do kind of take that into account with it. I wish like my drink and a lot of the, the specialty ones they make, they've started just pre-making them. And so you can see it already in a thing. So I do hate that about it, but they do, they make mine really strong, but I always just ask them like, will you make mine strong? And they say, <laughs> yeah. And then they do. So, or whatever. And I've never had that issue. So they usually just add more liquor in it. Yeah. Sometimes they do. Other times they splash more juice on. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. that's happened. I've watched it many times. Mm-hmm. So the, the bad part about this, and I don't want to call him out on it. Right. Because I, I, it's not fair. He's not here to defend himself. But Tyler, uh, our Disneyland guy, the I think the last time I went to Kava, it was with him. And Tyler is very open with money and is always willing to to try things out and yeah. spend a lot of money sometimes on things that I don't always think are worth it. But even the last time we went, he walked away and was like, God, this place has gotten too expensive. Mm-hmm. So when he's saying that, yeah, that says that a lot. Because Tyler, lot. like, if he, he doesn't care how much it is as long as he's getting something that's like, that he, he feels yeah. like it's worth it. Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. he's, he's ordered some pricey drinks. He likes tequila a lot, too, so mm-hmm. you know that says a lot about that, too. But um, Okay, well, I'm curious where everyone stands. On, well, you helped me make the list, so you know what I'm going to say, and you have it in front of you. But um, 50s Primetime. Um, tune-in Lounge. Tune-in Lounge. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to write down the other name. Um, at, uh, as part of 50s Primetime in uh, Hollywood Studios. Where do you... Uh, how do you feel about this one, Steve? I spoke up quick when we were creating this list, as this is a bar that I do not enjoy, because, because it's connected to the restaurant um there's constantly families and just lots of like commotion going on in there and it's not a place you can go down and have like a conversation with anyone because it's so loud and you know there's kids screaming and it's not a bar environment like you'd expect it to be because it's somehow melded with like a family environment somehow uh and the two just do not go well together um and it, it, it it has that you know, when you do think of the fifties, I, I, I don't. I know this is Walt Disney World. I'm throwing it over to Universal for a quick second. You think of like, I feel like the Swizzle Lounge inside of the um, yeah, C- Cabana Bay. Um, that that embodies like kind of when I think about the fifties drinking culture. I think mm-hmm. about it more in that Mad Men kind of. Um, that sort of style versus this is like what you said. It's like some, you're sitting in somebody's living room. <laughs> yeah. I right. mean, I guess, you know, it's that idea of like, okay, there's I, like I'm fam- home and here's my martini. Well, yeah, but that like Pleasantville, you know? Yeah. But it's not like set up like a study. So it like, it's more like a weird family environment. Like, yeah. like, Oh, grandma's screaming at somebody <laughs> yeah, over yeah. in the kitchen right now. Oh, well drink enough and you won't hear. Yeah. You know? Just, <laughs> yeah. This it's was, weird- ac- this Sorry. was actually my go-to place before baseline opened because, if I wanted liquor, they have that full bar there. Yeah. If you want, um, if you wanted beer, they actually had a pretty extensive bottle collection there. But uh, now that Baseline is open and they have a lot of good draft beer, it's kind of like I don't. If I'm not going to get a peanut butter and jelly milkshake, which is what I would always walk up there and get, yeah. or the beer or liquor, if I'm not doing that, what's what's the point? What's that noise you just made? A ye. To peanut butter and jelly. I love peanut butter. I hate jelly, so I don't get peanut wow. butter and jelly combination. Thanks. Oh, okay. Wow. I um I I will say I haven't tried Baseline. I know we talked about it a lot on our best one, but I just didn't say anything because I've not been there. But um I but Fifties Prime Time is my go to, or the Tune In Lounge is currently my go to mm-hmm. bar here. So maybe I need to try the other, and I'll yeah. flip like Craig did. But it's, we uh, again, I I don't I like I don't. It, it's not one of those. It, it, this is the worst show but oh, it's no, yeah. we're not i'm not really trashing any of these yeah. necessarily um no. it's just it is like because I, I i do agree like i've had good experiences yeah. in tune in lounge and you can if you're lucky enough you can go sit at the counter and really just take yeah. a break from that heat but the thing the biggest thing in my memory is screaming children oh yeah mm-hmm. and i i will say i get completely where you guys are coming from like as i said my thing is like i want the where i can get the quickest drink and leave which sometimes it can get a little confusing ingested but if i knew this would be on my worst list if i knew i had to go in there and sit at that bar and try and yeah. do anything because it is really <laughs> the service is usually fairly slow on that side of things because they're very understaffed for how many people are usually at the bar and trying to get a drink in there mm-hmm. but for me it always 
it started because that was where, when I went to see the Osborne Lights show, that just was where we happened to stop in, and I was able to get the light up ice cube, and I'm a creature of habit, so I've just always went back and haven't really ventured out too yeah. much. So yeah, that's fine. maybe I need to try some of the other places then and see. But if I had to linger here, I wouldn't like it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I get my drink and leave. So yeah. yeah. Well, that's going to bring us to our the last bar we have on this list, and it was a very de- de- divisive. Is that the right word? Yep. Uh, um, uh, it's Rose and Crown in mm-hmm. Epcot in the UK Pavilion. So the reason why this is on the list is because uh, the same reason why Tune and Lounge, La, La Cava, uh, Tequila, all these places, we had criteria that filled in what was the best and what was the worst. And I, I took it based on kind of what Charles said. You know, what's the atmosphere? What's the availability of seats? What is the environment when you're inside? So I know there are people out here who it is like, they go to Epcot so they can specifically go to the Rosen Crown and do this. You know what I mean? It is a mm-hmm. rite of passage. Yeah, yeah. It's not a place that I would say like, oh, never go. I, it is one of the few um, full bars in Epcot. It, um, But, I mean, it's just, it's one of those, the word is out. It is, I have been to uh, Ireland and London and both of those places, and I did not experience a pub like that was this insane mm-hmm. at any moment, at any day of the week that I was yeah. there. Well, that that's one of those things is this, I think this kind of goes on a list of, you know, things you should hit once. And that's part of it, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, English and Irish pubs are just very iconic as far as like drinking culture and stuff. So when you think of like ideal bars, you think of pubs. It's a very idealized like drinking environment, the way, especially the way Americans think about it. So like... Epcot has to have something like Rose and Crown, and they did a good job at it. It's just always so packed. It's always so crowded. Uh, It's hard to find availability. So, like, especially if you've never actually been to an authentic pub before, and this is, like, the closest kind of experience, you don't have one locally, then, yeah, I'd say stop in. But if you have been to, like, one or two few authentic, you know, English or Irish pubs, this isn't going to blow your socks off and maybe you want to try something different while you're going around there because it's not going to be like the relaxing pub experience that you get in a real pub where it's dimly lit and you can kind of hang out and just enjoy yourself. You know what I I dread speaking of that, like you just kind of trigger the thing. I dread going in here when I'm with like five people and Mm. nobody's buying the drinks for everyone. I dread it when there's five of us that have to somehow approach the bar and get up there and each individual has to make the order. And there are some of us who are the experts of weaving through crowds and doing whatever. And then there's the other timid person on the end who you're like, I'm not looking at you because it's not you, Steve. <laughs> but it, it like it's one of those where you're just like, oh. it's one of those places where I'm like, I, I actually find myself pressured into buying other people's drinks because I'm just too stressed out about being like, I want to get the drink and I want to get outside and I want to talk about this. But you have something to say about this. Place. Yeah, so I feel... I wanted to put this on our best list list um, because I, as much as we have that criteria and I believe in all the criteria that I talked about for everything else, but I almost want to throw it out the window oddly <laughs> enough with this particular one uh, uh, with Rose and Crown because I always find myself going back. Mm-hmm. Um, and for that reason, I feel like there must be, unless I'm crazier than I think I What's am. What's the drink you're always getting there? Why I like the back? Shandy. Okay. <laughs> I think good. I like the I like the uh, the the what is it the snake bite? It's the Guinness and the Strongbow. No, I'm not. not I'm not bite. just snake laughing at your drink choice, it. Steve. It's the your delivery was great. I like the yeah. shandy. <laughs> For, a, uh, a snake bite is usually harp lager. Then oh, it's harp. It's yeah. also made with uh, Strongbow. The way that the Brits drink it though is they do a snake bite with black currant, and basically they put black currant juice on the bottom and i part of why i love this place i'll explain all this together in a mumble jumbled way as i usually do i don't think this is on the worst list at all this is one of my favorite places this is a true place you go to drink you don't go this is not a place you go into for the relaxing environment you need this place 30 minutes before illuminations when uh, carol the hat lady is down at her piano playing and you can't talk to anyone in there and you're screaming at the bartenders for what you want to order and you've probably had a couple too many drinks but it's okay because you're staying on property and you can just take the bus back to your hotel that's where rose and crown thrives like when i when all the brits were over here working at uh universal for forbidden journey and stuff and we went to epcot 
this is where we would go drink and not because of it's they could have drinks that were somewhat authentic to what they were doing at home but it was the vibe the the party at night and the pub vibe and that's exactly what you get in here but uh they always love the snake bites with black currant juice because basically it just turns into this sweet uh a sweet cider that you can just start throwing back very quickly uh similar to how Stella Artois is very drinkable. That's why over there, apparently they call it the wife beater because, and I don't mean to keep making these jokes, these, but this is what they all called it. They called it that because they would drink, even though Stella's from Belgium, I mm-hmm. want to say, they all drink it so fast and quickly that they get too drunk and do that. But it's like, so that's oh, that's God. what you get when you go into Rose and Crown. You get, you get this pure drinking environment. And if that's not something you like, I agree. I can see why it would be on your worst. But well, if you're with I, your family at Epcot, I, I my family you didn't describe a very great with your children. I it's not always just about children. Walt Disney World is for family. No, I agree. And I'm just saying that's one of the that's one of the things that my my family loves. Like my dad doesn't drink, but he loved going in Rose and Crown and experience the atmosphere I, here in the piano. All that. I also think for me, maybe this is part of it, is it kind of reminds me of like going to a bar that I would go to when I was in college and that exactly you know, there's a little bit of madness to it. And mm-hmm. yes, I can understand like why some people could feel uncomfortable and not like that environment. But for me, maybe it's a little bit of nostalgia for that. I yeah. Don't know. There's along with that. I just and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not. Uh, I think last year two separate cases of people getting booted from uh epcot for public intoxication directly involved (laughs) drinking at the rose and crown right before that and one was i'm pretty sure an entire soccer team or the american soccer team it uh, was at least one of our Orlando. Uh, I think Orlando it was the girls' soccer team. Yeah. Soccer. Yeah. Yeah. One of yeah. the, an Orlando player was on the women's national team. I think yeah. for the United yeah. States, and uh, there are all these Instagram pictures. And so, like every time you see somebody booted out of Epcot for public intoxication, it's always like, and here are a bunch of like Instagram pictures that they had right beforehand, <laughs> and they're all wasted at Rose and Crown. Um, so uh, five to ten years ago, that would have been a huge selling point for me. Now, not so much, though. So I do get the draw there yeah. for people. I, I do have to point that in, too. I'm not saying go get hammered and then end up at Rose and Crown. Uh, it's, that is not okay. But it's you can get into that spirit, the, mm-hmm. the rowdy spirit of drinking at the pub without being three sheets to the wind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can still enjoy how loud it is and how everyone's having fun and, and feed off the energy. And that's part of what I love about Rose and Crown. Mm-hmm. It's actually sad when you go in there and you walk right up to the bar and just get a drink and like, okay, that's, yeah, that's it. I, I agree with that. I would say, um, I mean, for me, I think I know why it is that Rose and Crown, for one, has the rowdiness and has had some people kicked out. Um, the main reason I go there is because of doing drink around the world, which a lot of people do. You go into Epcot, you, everyone turns left. They start in Mexico. So England's right towards the end. And I mean, I know for me, I'm about 10 drinks in by that point. And that's kind of my point where I'm deciding how the rest of my night's going to go. And depending on what that is, I either get a Johnny Walker flight or I get, Jeez, um, John. yeah, <laughs> or like I said, depends on how my night wants to go. So either I'm going to get a Johnny Walker flight at that point, or I'm going to get uh, one of the beers. And I love that there's so many beer options. And when I get a Johnny Walker flight, it is frustrating because there's nowhere to sit with it. And because they give it to you on such a large, uh, like wooden slab, you kind of have to be a bit careful with it. You really need somewhere to put it. And so that's a problem. And especially when you're going to spend more money on something like that, that's like $25, $30. Um, you know, it, 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 so it would be really nice if that was there, but I think that's why that bar has so much rowdiness because yeah, people are at that point when they get there from going all the way yeah, around the that whole makes world. Sense. So I'm I'm a, I'm a walk into World Showcase and turn left turn type left, of guy. Yeah. Too, so I mean, I'm up two minds on it. I love it because of the rowdiness, but I wouldn't I wouldn't take my kid there. So I that just oh. isn't a thing for me. But 
It also sounds like I'm the only one in this room who's never been trashed at Epcot right now, too. So I don't Maybe. know why this bar... I'm not looking directly into your eyes right now, Charles. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm just <laughs> surprised you haven't been... Like, as an adult, my first three returning trips, I think, were um, bachelor parties for drinks around the world where people wanted to do that. That was mm-hmm. their tame bachelor party. It's like, mm-hmm. well, we can't get into too much trouble. My first time coming here after, like, turning 21 was, I like, when I moved and I became a cast member when I was, like, 22, and I did not make enough money to really drink yeah, around the world. So it was kind of like, I don't think I could even ever afford to have gotten drunk. I, like, <laughs> yeah. buzzed for sure, but... Yeah, but but anyway, so clearly Rose and Crown should have been on the best list, so I'm glad we had this discussion ahead of time. <laughs> so there you have it, the uh, worst bars at Walt Disney World by the worst. I mean, the least visited by us, so that doesn't include Rose and the Crown, which should have been in the other show. <laughs> so we have the Tune-In Lounge, which is part of 50s Primetime in Hollywood Studios, La Cava de Tequila at um, Epcot, the Dawa Bar at Animal Kingdom, and Spice Road Table in Morocco at Epcot as well. If we missed one that you absolutely hate and you want to tell us about, you can leave that in the comments below if you're watching this. Um, If you enjoyed this, you can like this. If you didn't, that's okay too. I'm sorry. Um, Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from us. We don't just do the best and worst. We do a whole slew of shows here at the Diz Unplugged. But thank you guys for having this discussion with me. And uh, that'll do it for this episode. And until next time, I don't know. Bye.